man, is it so good to see the Warner siblings and those laboratory mice again. 22 years later, and they can still kick butt. Figuratively and literally, of course. Coming straight from the 90s, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot had to adapt to the 2020s, where politics, internet trends, high-tech gadgets, reboots, and obnoxious weirdos take over. Brain won't be happy when he hears what I just said, and yet he's still pondering on how to take over the world, no matter how much he and Pinky fail. Every. Single. Time. Good luck trying to get a college degree, you know it all, rats. <laughs> ah, what's happening? Ah, ah. Make it blow, number one. Tones these days, I tell ya, boy howdy dur darn tonin! From the quality animation studio that brought you dead come family guy comes Family Guy! Again! Every element is copied and hastily disguised. The blowhard dad's problem is that he's an eccentrically Republican CIA agent instead of retarded. The wife is a cardboard cutout of every cartoon wife on TV and has lips that could devour a porpoise. Instead of a talking dog, there's a German talking goldfish. Or Swedish, get it? And the talking babies exchange for a talking alien. Gay! By use modernites. It's funny cause aliens aren't real and fish don't talk! Hurdy her stinking her! I hear the dad softens up in later seasons. He would botch up the government's plans to arrest any reviewer who uses copyright footage, so muzzle top to that. But the modern references go way over my head, the aliens' hijinks are annoying, and the whole thing is creatively bankrupt. Oh, and the dad's boss is voiced by, uh, Patty Stupod, uh, Pat Stewart, uh, I don't know, but he's okay, I guess. Insert cool animation reference here, tunes these days already. Finally, a cartoon that admits that it's annoying! Doesn't ever forgive anything about how it's so galafunkaliciously stupidastic. Heck, is this even a cartoon? The designs are just photographs edited into some god finangled fancy graphic slap happy editing pixel machine. And there are even shots of a live action actor at times. Who cares about the stories? It's just an orange having fun doing whatever it is with his friends! I am more entertained by my lunch than these guys! And I eat them! Unsurprisingly, this is the creation of two online party animals who just happen to break into television. Whatever! I mean, really, what are the chances of a short cartoon web series on YouTube and Blip TV possibly making it big? So it was brought to my attention that Ben 10 got itself another season. Except this time around, Ben split up with his pals Gwen Stacy and Alice Cooper and joined forces with the Avatar alien cat version of every single rebellion cop partner ever. One thing that ain't changed about this show though, plenty of alien bad guy butt kicking and plenty of things that look like they came from the costume bargain bin. Seriously, what is with the watches doing all manner of technical hoodoo is sip for telling time? When did transmogrifying watches suddenly became the end thing? And how does this show keep getting another season? <laughs> so, uh, did I avoid the warranty? I tell ya, tunes these days. I... I'm speechless. Just... speechless. Look, I know I'm old. That's my shtick. I don't care much for cartoons past Harry Truman's time in office. I make a yoke, you laugh. I know that! But... Wow, this really got me riled up. This? No other cartoon has ever made me feel as old as Breadwinners does. Nine bread delivery guys bust mechanic monster? Who gives a rip? Nothing in the show is appealing. The animation is lazy, it's attitude, obnoxious, the music, incomprehensible, and this is how you draw beaks now? I'd be surprised that these things are considered ducks, but Nick couldn't get the look of cats right years ago. This is aimed at the tiniest of newborns. This started from a YouTube flash tune that wasn't meant to go anywhere, but gained millions of hits? I believe it, Mac! I know Nickelodeon puts kids first. But can you at LEAST aim for the older crowd at the same time so we don't have to deal with the equivalent of a kid fiddling with a doorstopper on the wall?! 
I hear the other animation networks do that just fine now! Eh, it could be worse, I suppose. It could be another problem, Solvers. <sighs> hmm? I said get back in the closet! Oh, it's this show. Let's see how it is. Time for another review. Crit full of fudge, toons these days! This is the next Spongebob! All I see is Charlie Brown buddy heads with his sisters bossy ditzy, rocky happy, moody dopey, girly, nerdy, and yucky. I think he talks to the camera like Saved by the Bell to teach me, uh, some moral about how to live with a hyperactive family or, or, or birth control or hoo-ha, but my ears were ringing too much to hear it! <gasps> This show may be fine for older kids, but it's not for parents! If this is what it takes to raise puppies, then it's the bachelor life for me, baby! So many weird things can happen to you when you least suspect it, or predict it already, no thanks to the recycled plot lines or internet spoilers. Get out of here! In the case of Amphibia, we got Anne and two of her friends magically transported to another world inhabited by frogs and all other kinds of amphibians and reptiles. Anne was taken in by the Planter family, and man! They embark on so many adventures of mischief, amphibian cuisine, and facing dangerous monsters that could have come out of Dungeons and Dragons! Oh, great. But I got one. It's actually good for Anne to grow and become a more likable character. Kudos to her to try to keep herself sane where she's at. D. Tunes. D. Tunes. D. Tunes. D. Tunes. E. Tunes. D. Tunes. E. Tunes. E. Tunes. And speaking of sanity. See you later, folks. D. Tunes. I tell ya. So, this little train wreck features a feisty girl named Marionette who lives in Paris, France, who fights evil spirits and polka dot its spandex that she is way too young for. The show basically follows a Monster of the Week format where she runs into this other superhero, Cat Noir, who has a crush on Ladybug, not knowing he is actually her crush from school, whom he doesn't return her feelings for. Yeah, that love square of Clark catching is what really hooks fans in. Personally, you know, I hate CGI, and the quote, writing, is not my style. I get more enjoyment out of cracking juvenile spandex jokes every week. Oh, why won't you get this? Ork, Lab, and Wolf tunes these days, I tell ya. Flashback to 1998. I checked my mail to get the latest Looney Tunes magazine, when to my absolute horror it was discontinued by a magazine themed on this new fangled fad called Pokemon! So I phoned the publishing company, who then dropped a hundred magic carps and a sixteen ton Snorlax on my head, to which I responded by laser tasing them, who retaliated by posting my baby pictures online! And here I am today, you sellout schmucks! Thanks to the fans, Pokemon proved to be one of the all-time largest anime franchises ever, since it spawned a TV show that is still airing now, toys of bajillion movies, toys, games, and more toys! What gets me annoyed is that this show advocates animal fighting to make yourself feel like the best, causes seizures, and enforces how you gotta catch them all! All the merchandising! But heck, maybe they're onto something with the merchandise thing. A doggy wagga cat would sell like hotcakes! Has mankind been so cruel to bestow this horrid abomination in the Sonic franchise to torture its fans? Oh, Sonic. Never quite got that hedgehog on Ritalin's first show, but I don't get why he needed this so-so revival with that Red Baron of a Dr. Egg scrambling company when he already had a steadily declining success. More like Sonic Bust, am I right? <laughs> But I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm gonna put the nearest hospital on speed dial because I'm turning the fanboys whining into a drinking game! So if I follow the, all the cartoons on this hedgehog, we've gone from wacky shenanigans, action drama, rock band revolution, cross-dimension anime weirdness, and then back to wacky shenanigans! Proving the more some things change, the more the fans of this franchise have wasted their life! I thought the war was over! Why is everyone wearing bandages? 
For the love of deviant art, do all video game characters now look like inbred Mad Max hipsters? If this red person is called Knuckles because he has spikes on his knuckles, then how come this blue person isn't called Back? There's no logic here! All the characters have been redesigned. Sonic has a bunch of bandages, Knuckles hit up the steroids, Stills thinks he's the leader from Digiman now, and Amy bought herself a second dress. I'd say now they look like a bunch of totally cool dudes, but let's face the facts, Sonic was always a totally cool dude! Knuckles? I knew he was a bit slow, but in this show he's a complete moron! I don't understand how he gets up in the morning without choking on his own drool! It's a smart show! By that I mean it knows it's dumb! A game so bad you'll mace a GameStop employee over? Sega, you got other video games you can adapt into cartoons! Get the hedgehog off of life support! Ugh, sweet baby Huey's awkward adolescent years! It's like a bunch of different thoughts have been fighting over who controls my mouth today! By the stars of tunes these days, I tell ya! Do you ever wonder what would happen if you take a side of Disney Princess, mix it in a bowl with My Little Pony, create it in some Cartoon Network style humor, and add a dash of Rainbow or two? Well, one to know more, because Disney did exactly that with this new show called Star vs. the Forces of Evil. So it's about this princess from another dimension who gets sent to our world because her parents feel that she's not ready to be a princess yet. Kinda like Enchanted, only without the live-action garbage. Anyway, she got sent to this average high school where she's assigned to partner with this totally not a love interest boy named Marco. A kid who is so totally safe that he gets made fun of for not taking dangerous risks and being safe. Yeah, apparently not getting yourself killed is worth something ridiculing over. Oh, and Star sometimes gets a visit from her friend, a sassy floating unicorn head. Maybe she's from that other magical horse cartoon that somehow wandered into a magic dark food factory or something. And lived. I know Disney is big on princesses. I mean, after all, princess movies is what brings in the big moolah for the Mouse Corporation. So it was only a matter of time until they released a princess theme show to run alongside stuff like Gravity Falls and Phineas and Ferb. But man, they went overboard with the wackiness. I mean, Rainbow's on fire? Wow, that's so totally radical and cool! Wow, we actually went there again. So yeah, if you like seeing girls kick butts, alright I guess. Disney has such big faith in the show that they renewed it for a second season before the first season really aired! Yeah, we know how that worked out the last time somebody did that to a cartoon. This is the Cleveland Show? Ha! <laughs> Don Roy and I watch this epic journey of a Toon series. So Steven Universe is about a kid named Steven who has the gemtastic rejects of Josie and the Pussycats. Poisonly, I like the box-headed one. As adoptive parents. So something. Apparently Steven's the product of a hobo guitar player named Greg and a big gem Josie gal named Rose Quartz who went to Jared and got a baby with magic hoodoo powers. That he can't use for some reason. Seriously, this show lost me since the first episode! How the heck can Steven use his powers without even knowing how to use them? Actually, it's explained in a later episode that most of his powers come from extreme emotions of caring. It's practically hinted every other episode. Okay, so why did the crazy gem ladies raise Steven when his dad is around and about? Because he doesn't want to get involved in the gems' business. Plus, the gems vowed to protect the reincarnation slash child of their leader, Rose Quartz. And how about the fact that the purple one and the neurotic one getting into more fights than Scrappy-Doo in the entire universe? Amethyst was a creation from gem technology bent on creating gem colonies on Earth while wiping out any non-gem life on the planet. Just what the hug and- Many more questions about plot points later. Ah, so that's why everything is the way they are in this show. Yep. Ah, well it doesn't change the fact that I hate this bright mess of a moving show anyway! Only now I hate it and know everything that's going to happen instead of hating it while wondering what could be in that crazy plot web! And what's with everyone crying? Jeez, someone called a wambulance! Yeah, okay. Well, I like this show, and if I were to give it a score, it'd be... Great. Chuck a cup of Jones and leave me in a ditch! Tunes these days, I tell ya! 
Since TV producers like to blow out my eardrums, I had to watch Wander Over Yonder with my pair of Acme earphones. Then I realized they were just two lit sticks of dynamite, but it was STILL LESS NOISY THAN THIS NOISE HOLE OF A SHOW! So the show's about this fuzzy leftover drumstick named Wander and his hollering blue horse of a friend, Sylvia, and they go around the universe helping everyone out with their problems like door-to-door quick-draw McGraw cultists! And most of the problems are caused by a colorblind bad guy with the fashion sense of a Muppet named Lord Hader, who likes to scream like an orangutan while trying to take over worlds with his underappreciated lackey, Commander Peepers, while failing miserably thanks to Wander and his smiley antics and banjo. And in the middle of it, Sylvia tries to make people meet her fist. And you know what? I kinda liked it! Sure, the show is loud, the songs are more embarrassing than your grandparents singing Happy Boy's Day, and the Tom and Jerry shenanigans are through the roof, but it admits that it's stupid without taking everything seriously! Not to mention, the animation ain't bad for a modern tune. Yeah, I like the show, but is it any worse than lying back and sipping mango juice directly under a ton of heavy crap getting carried into an apartment complex? <laughs> Did you walk the car today? Duh. Owl House? What kind of title is that? Okay, so it's about this teenager who lives with Patty and Selma's long-lost sister, a Care Bear, and an annoying snake with an owl for a face. Then she meets some friends like Poison Ivy, Mini Sokka, and the Horn King for Black Cauldron. I don't know about you, but there is too much weirdness going on. And I'm from the rubber hose era! I'm not kidding, there's some crazy nightmare fuel that would make Pennywise wet himself! I get that it's riding on the rails of Gravity Falls in terms of mixing humor with horror, but we need something more wholesome and kid-friendly! I know! Let's bring back Minnie the Moocher! Now that's good, clean family fun! Want more cartoons? Click on one of the videos, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can see new cartoons early by becoming a Patreon or channel member.